All right, so I have turned in and finished my, my poster, and I saved my final decisions all in a TIFF file that layered everything together and put it all together into one image. And I liked the coloring, and everything was great. And I used actions to kind of push my final options back and forth. And you can see all the texture, and it's at a big enough resolution. You see it in inches, 18 by 24 inches by 350 pixels per inch, that it will print big and beautiful, and you'll see all that lovely detail, even the texture right on the lettering. But often, when you do kind of a hard crush of processing like we did to finish off the poster, things can get a little out of hand, or sometimes you'll question your decisions after the fact. So let me remind you of some of those finishing techniques and then maybe give you kind of a more reasoned way of dealing with it without doing that brute force, just pushing everything through actions. So if you remember, this was my finished TIFF. This was my print ready file and I had all of these merged alterations before it was finished. But I got that from my PSD. And my PSD got pretty complicated with varied backgrounds and different effects. So one kind of um, rational step you can make at this point, which is where a lot of you are, is you're going to separate your poster into its three main elements. And its three main elements are the spot illustration, the background, and the text. And then if you wanted to add a fourth element, which I might recommend, it would be keeping the border as a fourth element. So I'm gonna mark all these big elements in red. So the white border, and keep your border perfectly white. It helps with printing, and it helps you see the contrast in your image. And then all the things that do with the text, I'm going to merge those together into a group, even things that are turned off right now. Anything that's a title flag or type blocking. So I'm going to put that all into, select all those layers by holding down shift and then create a new group out of them and call that group, group the title flag or the text solution or whatever you wanted to call it. Now if something gets in your group you don't want, like the white border, I want that up outside of the title flag group. Okay, next, anything that has to do with my spot illustration, I already have in a group. And I want to make sure it's all layered in the same way. Yep, very good. And by putting them in groupings like this, it doesn't mean I have to, to merge layers. It means I can treat them all in some ways together. And then of course the background. Now my background was actually made up of lots of different things. So I'm gonna group all of these. You know, the black behind, the gray behind. I'm gonna group all of them into, even my flat white background, into one folder. And I'll just call it the background. So as you're looking at your poster and you're trying to figure out how to finish it off, think of these four components. I have the border to play with. I have the title to play with. I have the spot illustration to play with. And I have the background to play with. Now sometimes what I'll do is I'll simply squint. And I'll squint at the whole image and see, okay, what's, what's getting lost? And the, the title flag definitely holds up. But my spot illustration, no matter how much I love the detail, it's getting a little lost on this background. And I like the colorful background. I like the texture of it. And there's a few ways I can get that spot illustration to contrast more with the background. One way is I can make it darker. So if I take that background, go to the top of that background um, folders layers, hold down option and say layer, merge visible with option held down, 
Now I'll get a 100% layer on top. Oh, turn off the other ones. <laughs> Option, layer merge visible. I'll get a 100% background layer that I can just mess with the uh, adjustments to it. So for instance, I can push its levels and I can push its midtones darker. And that helps my spot illustration pop out a little bit. I can limit its highlights. I could brighten it up. Oh, that's some interesting effects there. Well, it's just kind of a, a dirty paper now instead of a full textured background. All right. Then I can play with its saturation. So first I play with levels, then I can play with its balance. If you want to be subtle. And then saturation if you want to be more hands-on. I want to kind of push away from all the blues. All right, next, we go to hue saturation, and this is where you can really change things up with the hue you choose. These are looking like some, some old school kind of Xerox effects. But often you can lose a lot of the complexity that way. So what hue saturation can also affect is just how colorful it is. And by taking the saturation down a lot, that helps my spot illustration stand out a little bit more. This is just an option we have. I could change the lightness or the darkness, but that also just limits the contrast too much. You know, leave it at zero. All right, so that gives me an option. It was like this. This is something I did that solves one problem, but it maybe causes another problem where I don't have as much interest in these empty areas anymore. So it feels just kind of blah as a poster. So one thing I might try is uh, vignetting. So now my spot illustration stands out well, but the edges of the poster are no longer interesting. So vignetting is simply when you darken or lighten the edges of where you want the viewer to see. So in this case, it's already pretty light, so I'm not going to lighten the edges anymore. It's already feeling too fractured. So to vignette, I might use the burn tool. I might put it on midtones. Nice, soft, large brush. And I might have to actually burn highlights here to get started. Just to give a little bit of darkened value at the edge. You see, that can make a big difference. Now, if you want more color to that, then you can go to the sponge tool and you can set it to actually saturate your color a little bit instead of to take color away. This is like a spot tool for hue saturation. And I can just hit those edges a little bit, bring back a little bit of that saturation. And so you'll see those little fragments now. All 
and I like it. It looks kind of repeated and rational, but also pretty messy, a little disgusting and dirty, which kind of goes with the theme. And it, this texture contrasts nicely with, with the water of my spot illustration. It also kind of brings out the colors more in my title, which is a separate element. All right. Then, of course, you can merge the two or play them against each other. See how much those new changes help because you don't need to keep them at 100%. So I can use the best from both worlds, right? Just by playing with opacity. I can also try different layer styles. And one that might work well here is saturation, which is basically use everything from before, but just take it down to the saturation level of the new settings I used. And that does help my spot illustration to stand out. but I kind of miss the, uh, the vignetting that I added a little bit. So I always like to try pin light and soft light. Soft light seems pretty effective there. <coughs> kind of working between the two. And I think ultimately, you know, I'll just tone it down a little bit. Now another way I can get my spot illustration to really stand out on the background is I can look at its offset at its edges and it has this little white offset around it that's been kind of overtaken by some of the uh, the CMYK separations I put over the top but what if I merge everything in the spot illustration so I turn off everything else, including the background. I'm just looking at this element. And I go to the top layer within my group and I hold down option and I say layer, merge visible. Then it puts everything on a top layer there. So I don't worry, have to worry about losing anything. I turn everything else back on, the borders in the background. And then just on this very top one, I can do little things like add a stroke around it that's bigger and more opaque. I can also add drop shadows. So that white helps a little bit. It might be a little heavy handed. Maybe take the opacity down a little bit. I can incorporate that. I like that though, especially down here. I can incorporate that with an outer glow and make that glow white or even this blue. Let's see. And make it big enough and spread out enough that it makes a difference. Like a little water stain coming out. Yeah, that's kind of nice. And it's set on screen, so it's only going to lighten. So that definitely kind of sets off the, the spot illustration a little bit more. I can play with how noisy it is. So it doesn't look too smooth out on the edge. Yeah, I like that. So those styles can work. Also, just like we did with, with the, um, the actions, I could use that overall combo just to play with the color balance of my spot illustration. You can push it a little bit more towards the reds, a little bit towards the magentas, a little bit towards the yellows, a 